speaker is Catherine Briggs. She has worked in public ed education for 37 years. She has a love of local history and the discovery of the original mud wagon stored at her local fairgrounds fueled an interest in stagecoaches and the stagecoach era and a desire to learn more about the whole world. She has spent many happy hours driving along portions of what was the California Oregon Stagecoach Road, aka the Big Road, in her county, visiting extent stage stations and reading about the lives and adventures of all the stakeholders in the stagecoaching world. And that include drivers, passengers, hostlers, farriers, the horses, and the stage stations and stops. So I ask now, Catherine, if you would come up and talk to us about the title of your talk, which is Yehus from Eureka Stagecoaching in Northern California. Microphone. My friends claim I still have a playground voice. <laughs> um, the pronunciation that I've come up with is this Jehu or Jehu, and I changed the title from Yreka to Siskiyou because it's more inclusive. Let's see, let's figure out how this works. Okay. I wanted to orient you to where I'm talking about. If there were a couple words in the title of my program you weren't familiar with, you will know what they mean by the time I'm done. Siskiyou is the name of the county where I live. And it's at the top of California, at the California-Oregon border. The, um, make this happen again. There you go. You'll see, wait a this slide shows the big road that went from Sacramento, California, up to Portland, Oregon. The two blue stripes that look like they're approaching each other on the very left represent the one on the bottom is the Sacramento River. It was navigable by steamer from Sacramento up to a town called Red Bluff. The blue one coming down from Portland is the Willamette River, and it was navigable down as far as Eugene. And so one mode of travel was to take the steamboats. You could meet the stage then at those stops. The problem with the steamers is that they had a propensity for exploding, <laughs> which was not a desirable advertising thing to do. The big road, as it came up from Sacramento and came through my county, or the California Oregon Stage Road, as it was also called, had branches to it. And you need to understand those, what those, where those branches were, in order to understand some of what was happening with the stagecoach in Europe. Most people are familiar with the 49ers, and I don't mean the football team, I mean the gold canners, um, who came into California. Gold was discovered at Sutter's Mill in 1848. In uh, 1849, we were hearing about the um, 49ers. In 1850, California became a state. But there was a second gold rush that was in my county. And actually, more gold value-wise came out of Siskiyou County than came out of what we traditionally think of as gold country. Because in gold country, they were also mining silver. We did not. In 1852, Siskiyou County became a county. And in 1854, we got our first post office. Now the three branches that you see coming up from Sacramento, they split in Redding, California. It's spelled differently than Redding, Pennsylvania, although in some resources you will see it spelled R-E-A-D-I-N-G. We spell it R-E-D-D-I-N-G. The one that goes to the, the right, to the east, went around Mount Shasta, and it was the Pitt River route. The Pitt River Indians were not happy about this situation, and they would attack anything that wasn't part of their tribe. In fact, if they could attack a stagecoach and capture the coach, they would set it on fire. One driver who drove the Pitt River route 
managed, he was under attack, he managed to release the horses and he rode them to the next station. When he got to the station, he collapsed. And they discovered, although he lived, he had 18 arrow wounds in him. Wow. <laughs> Party people. The, the branch that goes in the center pretty well follows the Sacramento River. And that the Sacramento River headquarters are actually in my county. That set, the first map over there has an ending before that one. That's not true. And that was the most popular route. It was the most direct route. The one to the um, left was called the Scott Valley Route. And it was also well-traveled. However, upon occasion, the stagecoach company would close that one down for some reason or another. It's very hilly. And the people in Scott Valley got angry about that. They started their own stage company, which they called the People's Stage Company. Very 1960s hippie, in my opinion. Um, there were a couple of determining factors in the stagecoaching experience in my county. The geography, the topography, and the weather. So let me introduce you to my county so you can see what many of the drivers were dealing with. You have this little map in your handout. It doesn't have the red and the green stuff in it. The green stuff represents where the mountains are. It's all mountains, basically. But we have three major valleys in the county. The one, uh, the eastern one, the one that's to, uh, to the right, is called the Butte Valley. And it's probably land-wise the largest. And a trail that left from a stage station in my county, in the, in the center of my county, went over a trail called Topsy Grade. And it was scary. It's scary now. You can drive it in a car if you're brave enough. And um, that eventually, if you went from the north out of the Butte Valley, you came to Linkville, which is now renamed Klamath Falls, Oregon. Um, the center valley is the Shasta Valley. And at the very bottom, the south end of the Shasta Valley is Mount Shasta. And you'll see it in the center right picture, the center bottom picture, and that's not Mount Shasta in the other one. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's Mount McLaughlin, Mount Shasta, Mount Shasta. The reason the Pitt River route went around Mount Shasta is because you can't go over it. It's 14,100 some odd feet. Not low. And it sticks up almost out of nowhere. Um, the Shasta Valley, like the Butte Valley, is very agricultural. Um, hay, ranching. Three quarters of our county is owned or is in public lands. Cloud National Forest covers a great deal of our land. The uh, wildlife refuges, the fish and wildlife. And so we don't have a lot of land that we can just use for ourselves. It's all pretty well taken up. That wasn't so at the time. But what that's done is it's preserved the area to look very much like it did 150 years ago. The um, couple of towns in the Shasta Valley I want to point out to you, and I put them in red on your map. Um, there's a little town called Gazelle, and that's going to fig figure in a story I'm going to tell you. The county seat is Wairika, not Eureka. Eureka is on the coast. Wairika is in our county. And Wairika is the county seat of Sister County. The westernmost valley is the Scott Valley. And a couple places there you need to know about are um, uh, Callahan at the bottom end. Fort Jones and Edna. Now above the Middle Valley and going west is the Klamath River. We have several very large rivers in our county. There's the Klamath River flowing west. There's the Sacramento River flowing south. There's the Salmon River. Good fishing for all the people who like to fish. There's another little town at the very top of, in fact, it's, it's out of the valley of the middle one. It's called Hilt, and that figures in a couple of stories I'll tell. But you get an idea from the pictures surrounding it, those pictures are from all three of those valleys, and you get an idea of what the stagecoach drivers and the people living at the time were dealing with. Now, there were some famous coach builders who built the stagecoaches, the most famous being Abbott and Downing. And I must apologize to Mr. Abbott right now. The first entry in your bibliography, I put two T's in it. But I redeemed myself on the next page and I spelled it correctly, so I feel better about that. 
Um, but we had a local carriage shop, Swan and LeMay, two gentlemen. Um, and they had a contract with the CNO Stage Company for repairing vehicles and building vehicles. And of course, the iconic stagecoach we think of is the beautiful Wells Fargo Concord coach. That coach could weigh 2,500 to 3,000 pounds, empty. It cost um, 1,200 to 1,400 dollars. I've ridden in one. It's a very comfortable ride, but I was on flat ground. It takes about 18 hides to make all the leather parts, the thorough braces, the front boot, the back boot. The California Oregon Stage Company also have a Concord coach. They were green. And this coach is a replica. That one is too, it's not the original. Um, the green one was built from the measurements from a friend of mine who's a Wells Fargo stagecoach driver. He lives over in Atlanta Falls. And his friend who built the green one went and spent some time measuring his coach. But our geography and topography and weather kind of required that we had something a little bit lighter. And so, ingloriously named, the mud wagon was created. This one sits at our local fairgrounds. It does sit inside all the time it's brought out for something here. I measured this coach. The measurements on this coach are exactly the same as the Concord coach. However, it only weighs about 1,200 pounds. This, we think, is probably a nine inside, three outside passenger vehicle. It is in pretty much original condition, although it was repainted. And the fellow who repainted it said to the person who said he wanted it that color, he said, that's not the right color. It wasn't that color. It was green. And the owner said, no, I want it red, or it's actually kind of a car car carmine red. The fellow who painted it was sanding it, and lo and behold, down in one of the seats, he found a little swath of olive drab green. It was great. This coach has quite a story. Um, it's now insured for $350,000 because it is so original other than the paint. This coach was saved for us by one of our drivers that you'll meet a little bit later. The fairgrounds, I believe, owns this coach. The coach used to sit on the front porch of the museum along with another coach, but the teenagers were using it as a party place. And they had no local bathroom nearby, so guess what they did? This little mud wagon is just kind of up the road for me. It's in private hands, owned by the Burton family. Mr. Burton won this in a bet. It was a political bet. And it was found rotting in a field. He wanted it, so he had this bet. What it was, I don't know. The first time I saw this coach, I thought, that's got to be an Abbott and Downing. Because here is their mail coach. You can't see it on the bottom. It's mail coach number 201 in their catalog. I thought, that has to be. But further reading has indicated to me that it was probably built by Swan and LeMay. And Swan and LeMay, we think that they didn't build them from scratch. We think they ordered the running gear from a company called M.P. Henderson in Stockton, California. In my part of the country, we don't have the hardwoods. We have oak trees, but they're gnarly ones. You can't get a really long, good piece of wood out of it. So they were probably ordered from somewhere else. They may have built the, the, the top carriage part, not quite sure. This is Swan and LeMay's um, blacksmith shop in Wairiga. We think that's Mr. Swan standing next to the uh, carriage there, the, little, the, shorter, the short guy with the hat on. And I want to introduce you to something that I only fairly recently found, found out of. You can't see this, and I know you can't see it. This is a Sanborn fire insurance map. If you are not familiar with those and you want to learn about where things were, these maps were made for every town in the United States. And they came and they did the drawings. They very often only put livery stable or blacksmith shop or firehouse or store. And they would describe it, what kind of foundation it had. And they do them, they repeat them every so many years. The Library of Congress has um, has been digitizing these. They have a lot of them online right now. Their goal is to put 500,000 of them online. 
because they were repeated for your town. So if you're trying to find something, maybe your local historical society also has access to a San Francisco Public Library has a large collection of them. Sanborn fire insurance maps. And Sanborn Company, I believe, is still existed. We know that Swan and Lene built this code.